You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. To Late Night with Cornell. Host and author Cornell Bunting will highlight some of today's intriguing talent across every platform and musical genre as he showcases their beautiful minds. Cornell will discuss their journey and how they develop their achievements through all the good and all the bad. So now, welcome the host of Late Night with Cornell, Cornell Bunting. We're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is Late Night with Cornell. I'm your host, Cornell Bunting. On tonight's show, we'll be talking a little bit about some what-ifs. You know, some, uh, some incredible what-ifs. Like, that could have changed the course of history. Like, what if Hitler died on the battlefield in World War One. Right, what if so are prevalent in all walks of life? You know, music fans may inquire, what if Jimi Hendrix had lived for longer? You know, would he had produced even more phenomenal records? You know, I live them, you know, those members may uh, query what if we hadn't made a collision with Tory? Would we still have relevance today? Or uh, let's say football, you know, you know, I'm from the islands. And so, you know, growing up in England, um, we know the game football um, that you guys have it here as soccer. Um, those fans might ask, what if England weren't utterly hopeless? You know, could they have managed to prevail over a country with a population totally fewer than Wiggins? It's crazy. It's crazy, but listen, there will never be a definitive answer to any of these questions, but that is the beauty of what ifs. You know, they can be applied to just about every single scenario and most particularly with key historical events. You know, uh, it does not take a genius to work out that if the odd decision had been made differently or here or there, or if certain people had not been elevated to positions of power, then history could have taken a very different course. So, you know, uh, for a lot of you listeners that are joining in, um, wondering who is Cornell Bunting, and possibly you've heard a little bit on the intro telling you I'm a published author. Uh, I do have uh, about three books published so far. We have some novels um, that's getting ready to come out. Um, but tonight's show, I, I feel it's going to be a lot of fun. And, you know, in later shows, you guys will get a chance to hear me pick apart a few entertainers like myself, uh, whether it's an actor, actress, a musician, uh, you know, um, someone that writes like myself. Um, what that mind look like, you know, it's it's quite intriguing. So, uh, uh, what if the U.S. had seen 
two presidents assassinated on the 22nd of November in, in 1963. You know, what if Empire Napoleon Bonaparte had evaded the British colony of Australia? And, of course, I know a lot of people are wondering, because, you know, I don't know if you've seen the movie, but they've shown where an officer had the opportunity to kill Adolf Hitler, and he didn't. But we'll go into that in a little bit more as I dive into these what-ifs. And so my first what if, I ask, what if London B. Johnson had been assassinated on the same day as JFK? See, uh, President John F. Kennedy, you know, uh, he was assassinated in Dallas on the 22nd of November in 1963. And this literally shocked the world. You know, but the fallout from it would have been far greater had his successor Lyndon B. Johnson been killed on the same day. Uh, So just so you guys know, uh, just hours after Lyndon had uh, assumed presidential office after being sworn in on Air Force One in the immediate aftermath of J.K assassination, the new president of the United States was almost shot, people. I am so serious. And when I say that, it was it would have been by a secret service agent, no less. You know, uh, with the secret service on high alert following John F. Kennedy assassination, one particular agent named Gerald Blaine was uh, patrolling uh, Lyndon's um, estate in Washington that evening when out of the corner of his eye, he spot a figure walking around the corner. Blaine read his machine gun and put his finger on the trigger, people, ready to fire until he finally noticed it was (laughs) vividly scared President Johnson, who quickly rushed back into the house. Imagine if that had went different, if Johnson had also been assassinated on that same day. Then the Speaker of the House, uh, which uh, um, um, they are actually next in line, and um, that would that would be quite that would be quite interesting. And I I would say in '63 that was a 71 year old Democrat um, John Williams McCormack. But it's fair to say that if McCormack had been elevated to the Oval Office. I probably would say the United States future would probably be mm, a little different. What do you guys think? It's quite interesting. And then, you know, because I'm, you know, I'm a man of literature and, you know, maybe uh, you guys hear my accent and you're like, what are we hearing right now? What are we hearing? You know, I was born in Jamaica. I grew up in England. Uh, I live in America right now. I do travel a lot. Uh, it's a beautiful thing, you know, when you write books and then kids are like, you know, we really like your story. We want you to come talk to us about it. And so, you know, I do some motivational pieces and go out and just try to help the youth understand how valuable they are to what this next chapter looks like. You know, uh, it's like us older folks really rely on Generation Z, I guess, and and hoping that their mind is is in the right place because the future uh, depends on it, innit? So another question is, what if William the Conqueror 
had invaded England two months earlier. You know, those are questions that maybe you ask yourself on this break. As uh, we continue Late Night with Cornell, I'll be back momentarily right here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 20 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Welcome back to Late Night with Cornell right here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Cornell Bunting, and we are talking about what ifs. What could have that maybe never happened but should have? It's a whole lot to it, and like I said in some of my earlier show, you guys can call into the show. The number is 866-451-451. 1451 uh you can give your input on what you think on these pieces as i take you guys uh down history down history lane yeah some would say memory lane but i'll just go with history lane yeah um but as i was saying before the break um what if william the conqueror had evade england two months earlier See, on the 14th of October in 1066, William the Conqueror led a Norman army into England and defeated King Errol at the Battle of Aston. The last time the British shore were successfully breached and the monarch overthrown. Yet things could quite so easily have been so different. The soon-to-be King Williams had been planning this invasion of England for nine months and originally intended to set sail across the Channel by about, I want to say, the 12th of August, 1066, only for strong winds and wet weather to delay him. Now it is the timing that was particularly important here because if William the Conqueror had evaded due in August, then King Herod would have had a far stronger and fresher army at his disposal than he did two months later. Yep. You can think the rest of it, but it would have probably been a whole different scenario now, innit? 
for me, I got to tell you guys that it's quite intriguing, you know, when I go back in time and just read up on a lot of the stories, you know, the Buccaneers, the Pirates, all these different things that happen back in history, uh, you know, and then you think of all these what ifs, like what if this had happened, what if that had happened, you know, um, what if the British and the French had warred over Sudan? You know, both the British and French Empire were advancing through Eastern Africa throughout the late 19th century. And once their path crossed on the continent, they almost engaged in a huge war. It, serious. This was like uh, 1898, you know, while Britain controlled much of Eastern Africa, the French and um, expedure force uh, I think that was led by Major Jean Baptiste. Oh, wild. It's wild, people. A whole lot of stuff. But I got to say, newspaper in both France and Britain printed a sensationalized story about how warfare was close. And both attempt to drum up to all this what it what it what it was looking like it was crazy it, it, it was just really crazy but let's move past that let's come over here again for a little bit in america and let's say what if lincoln had been murdered en route to his inauguration <gasps> what that would have been wild, innit? it? <laughs> Yo, listen, the great emancipator, you know, Anisab, you know, uh, liberator, you know, all these nicknames, you know, which, uh, you know, the 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, would never have been given had he been assassinated before he ever assume the highest office in the land. You know, never far from an uh, assassination attempt. You know, he received more than 10,000 death threats during his four year as president. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you, like he had his hand full people. You know, it was the Baltimore plot of February 1861 that came the closest to killing Lincoln before he ever considered in the White House. You know, the Republican president-elect was en route to his inauguration in the immediate aftermath of the Southern State Declaration that they would secede from Union and form the Confederacy. You know, when a plot was discovered that suggested conspirator was intending to stage a riot as Lincoln train passed through the city before assassinating him. That's crazy, people. I mean, for them, having learned that plot, Lincoln travel route was altered at the last minute so that he was secretly transported to Washington, D.C. Via several different trains, Lincoln was finally inaugurated on the 4th of March, 1861. It was horrible. You know, obviously, I mean, you know, Lincoln was eventually assassinated by John uh, Wilkes, Wilkes, however his name was, Boot. You know, while he was attending the theater on 15th of April, 1865. I mean, so it took them a little bit to get to him, but they did. You know, but had he been killed while elected, then it would extremely likely that the U.S. Civil War would have had a very different outcome. And the emancipation of 
slaves in America may not have happened until long time later than it did. You know, Lincoln, four years in office, uh, you know, it was very important. Um, I would say uh, served by a president in that seat. It was, you know, it was one of those things, but it makes you go back and, and just think, man, you know, like how much certain people just, uh, it's, there's certain things that, you know, uh, sometimes you don't want to say, but, you know, you kind of graze on it a little bit. But listen, we'll be back with more Late Night with Cornell right here on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'll be back right after these messages. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it patricia fayweather harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources she's written a five-part book series for all ages called rock with rodney and party with perky to preserve wildlife which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes and she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Yes, welcome back to Late Night with Cornell right here on BBM Global Network. I'm your host, Cornell Bunton. Of course, you're on TuneIn Radio as well. This is lovely. We're talking about what ifs, things that could have shaped what this future looked like now, back in history, a whole lot of it, what that looked like. And, you know, for me, looking at different researches and, and things that have happened in the past, it is quite interesting just to pick a few and talk on them. And like I said earlier, if you want to be a part of the show, you can call in to the show and we can talk about one of my what ifs. You know, you give me what you, your take has on it. And like I said, you can call the show at 866 451 one four five one. What if the USSR had evade Japan? Ooh. You know, for the longest time after the USA had joined World War Two in uh, December nineteen forty one, they had been buggling uh, the USSR to assist the fight. In the Far East, you know, likewise, the Soviet had regularly plead with the Americans and British to open a second front in Europe long before D-Day, which that was in June uh, 1944. I would say the Russians 
they actually um, agreed, you know, but it was not until just a week before the Japanese surrender that the Red Army evaded. You know, the Soviets and uh, the Manilians uh, evade the Japanese puppet state uh, Manchoko, I think, yeah, if I can pronounce it right. You know, I was in Northeast of China on the 9th of August uh, 1945. This was three days after the U.S. dropped an atomic bomb. It's crazy people. And you know, for me, like, I jump in and I leave you guys to think a little bit on what that could look like. Like, let's say... What if shots had been fired during the Cuban Missile Crisis? You know, this fact doesn't really need to be hammered home any further. Like, that right there is crazy. But just in case it wasn't well known enough, you know, after many occasions throughout the Cold War, you know, when tension arose and the world almost descended into a nuclear war, at no time did the globe come closer to an atomic apocalypse than during the Cuban Missile Crisis of October 1962. You know, this 13-day confrontation between the USA and the USSR lasts from the 14th of October until the 28th. And that arose out of a conflict over the Soviet Union deploying ballistics missile in Cuba. While it's just 90 miles off the coast of Florida, you know, with the USA having embarrassingly failed during the Bay of Pigs invasion of Cuba a year previously. You know, uh, uh, President John F. Kennedy wanted to make a point to Soviet leaders, you know, that uh, he would not be bullied. But the latter wanted America to uh, withdraw their Jupiter ballistic um, missile from Italy and, and Turkey. That, that was just, that was wild. I mean, with all that right there, let's say nuclear war would likely have completely destroyed the planet. Thankfully, it hasn't happened yet. Um... What I gotta say, this is this is wild people. So listen, I'll be back with more what ifs right here on Late Night with Cornell. I'm your host, Cornell Bunting, right here on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Be back after these messages. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. And we're back with Late Night with Cornell right here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Cornell Bunting. We're talking about what ifs. 
you know, a few things that could have happened if it had happened a certain way, how much history would have changed. It's quite interesting. But, you know, I, I got to go back into one of my piece. Uh, what if Napoleon and invaded Australia? That would have been wild. And, you know, a lot of you um, that's listening, it's like, um, uh, this guy is so uh, so much British stuff or whatever, in it? I do got some America in it as well and uh, some other pieces. But, like, pieces that could, that could really change the course of history, what that look like. I got to say, America have their hands in the probably every single country in the world. I, I think you go to any country and there is possibly a U.S. embassy that is there. It's wild. Country is humongous. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, I'm, I'm really happy I'm a citizen here in this country, um, you know, and uh, just been doing a lot of what I do here. It's been quite interesting, but it makes me look at a lot of these uh, significant moments and things that could have happened that didn't quite happen the way I think possibly those individuals um, were hoping. Um, you know, let's say, let's say, what if Aaron Burr had established his own nation? Whoa. Aaron Burr may be most famous for killing his political rival, Alexander Hamilton, during an illegal duel in 1804. But the former vice president of the United States also contemplate establishing his own country in the early 19th century. President Thomas Jefferson, under who Burr served, allegedly that uh, Burr plot with Commander-in-Chief of the United uh, States Army at New Orleans and Governor of Louisiana Territory, Territory uh, General James, to create a new independent nation in Central or Southwestern America in areas of Louisiana and Mexico, you know, which had yet to be conquered by the USA at the time. You know, uh, but this was quite intriguing, though. You know, imagine, though, if he had established his own, uh, I suppose, rival nation, it would almost certainly have brought the American Civil War forward 50 years, potentially preventing the USA from ever becoming the dominant North America force it became in succeeding century. That is, that is quite intriguing right there. It's quite wild, I got to say. But let's say we was to go back and think on what if the slave war didn't turn out the way it did? We go on that. Who won? I, I think they're still confused on who really won that war. But that's just my opinion, I guess. It's quite wild, but the big what if at the evening. What if Hitler had died on the battlefield in World War I? Wow. That would have been massive, people. So Adolf Hitler, you know, he brought 
destruction to the entirety of the planet. I mean, he've he've killed millions of Jewish people during the Holocaust and, you know, tens of millions of soldiers, civilians, and, you know, um, all these different individuals during World War II, you know, but all that could have been so different if Private Henry Tandy had pulled the trigger on the 28th of September, 1918. My goodness, why didn't he pull the trigger, people? This is crazy. You know, while the future, you know, Fuhrer was serving in the German army during the Great War, he was wounded near the French village of uh, uh, Makanin, I, I want to say they call it, and was left sprawling on the battlefield. At that moment, Private Tandy of the, the Noxshire Regiment discovered the 29-year-old German lace corporal but he decided to spare Hitler's life rather than shoot him. I mean, mean, he looked so scrawny. He looked like he he wasn't really capable of doing much. I think this is possibly why he spared his life. You know, if he had probably said something hard, he probably would have shot him, but that didn't happen, people. Hitler gave him that look. And dude, spirit, he speared Hitler. You know, I mean, Tandy later revealed, you know, I, I, I took aim, but couldn't shoot a wounded man, so I let him go. Supposedly, Hitler, Hitler had not his approval, at Tandy and run off. You know, when a photo had emerged in the British newspaper of uh, Tandy carrying a wounded soldier across the battlefield in uh, 1914, Hitler reportedly had a copy of the that, that same painting by Italian artist Mantia. You know, while showing the the piece of Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain in 1938, that's the man who nearly shot me. Obviously, right-wing tensions and ultra-nationalists across Germany push World War One, anyway, but without the leadership of Hitler, it is difficult to see how radical Nazi party could have risen to power and then reassume this Prussian dominance over Europe. If Hitler had been shot that day, millions upon millions of life could, in theory, have been spared. Well, uh, that wasn't the case. And, you know, I, uh, people still talk about Hitler to this day. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about him right now. It's wild. It's the what ifs, people. What ifs? I feel like going into my piece like, what if, what if I didn't write this book called Lion With No Roar? I probably wouldn't have had all these different opportunities to talk to all these different kids in all these different parts of the world about finding their own calling, finding themselves, finding who they are, what that looked like. 
you know, what if I was still doing hospitality? I probably wouldn't be a, an author right now, a video game developer. But we'll talk more about this when I get back from this break. So listen, stay locked right here, Late Night with Cornell. You're locked in to BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I'm Cornell Bunting. Be back after these messages. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. And we're back with Late Night with Cornell right here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Cornell Bunting. Been talking about some what-ifs. What could have happened if that had happened? Would history have been changed? Would we be in a different world right now? It's, It's so much questions. You know, what if Bill Gates didn't discover Microsoft? Oh, that's a big question right there, isn't it? Listen, before we even dive into more of that, I'm going to dive into one of my pieces. Like, what if I didn't write this piece right here? So, going into character a little bit and... feeling it like I'm just I'm I'm feeling it you know I've actually been ever since I did a bunt walk I I just was just drawn to doing a follow-up book of poems and I tell you there is some pieces in it that is quite intriguing I mean I'm I'm impressed myself on just when I read back on them but before I go into that I just wanted to read back one of these pieces, possibly just draw it from my head a little bit because, you know, I wrote it. So, you know, this little black boy. So my mom bore me in the wild of the West Indies. This little black boy. But what if my soul is white? White as an angel is an English child. But I'm black, as if lights out. My mom taught me in a yam field, standing before a 110 degrees heat. She took me on her lap, with kiss to the forehead, pointing to the east, then look at me to say, look at where the sun is rising. Maybe that's where God lives giving us his light, always giving away his heat to us. So the grass, trees, beasts, and men receive. Come forth in the morning, joy at noon, and hush, she said. We were put here in a little space where we may learn to bear a beam of love. So this black body and this sunburned face in a cloud, rocky like a shady groove. But mom, shh, unto the face. Then she said, so when our soul have learned the eat to bear, 
the cloud will disappear. Then we will hear his voice saying, Come out from the pride, my love and care. So around my golden tent, we look like lambs rejoicing. This was what my mother said. Kiss on the forehead. Me with a look of concern, thinking of my English girl. I am bold now to saying, when I am from black, and you from white cloud free, so at the tent of God, we be like lambs with joy. I'll shield you from the heat till I can bear to learn in joy of our Heavenly Father near. As you touch my black ballad and say, Oh my, you for sure will be my little black boy. A piece right there like that when I think of that, you know, I was talking to my mom today on the phone and it just kind of bring back so much memories. A mom, you know, she's still in Jamaica, so... You know, big ups to you mums, if you're listening. Um, It's always been uh, a challenge with you, but it was fun. Learned a lot. It's good. So, as I was saying earlier, you know, I, um, I started writing, um, the follow-up book because I wanted to put more poems in the follow-up book than uh, the first book. You know, the first book had 33 pieces. My goal is to put 50 pieces in the follow-up book. And there's some there's some cool pieces, you know, and um, because I'm going to be performing a lot of these pieces the dialect is is quite intriguing because I wanted people to hear the patois more and just the, the meaning behind a lot of it, you know, and so it's like, it's wild. So I want to share one of the new piece. It's called Baal, Mia Baal. So, if, you, if you're wondering what Baal mean, it's in Jamaica, when someone say, me a Baal, it means I'm crying, that person is crying, me bawling me eye out, me bawling me eye out, so it's like, uh, you know, it's saying that I'm crying my eyes out, I'm, I'm crying so much, it's so much tears running from my eyes. That Patwa dialect is so intriguing that it's it just sounds so interesting when you, when you say it, you know. So this piece called Baal, me a Baal, Baal, me a Baal, Baal, me a Baal, Baal, me a Baal. Listen to the news, not good. Baal, me a Baal. Lick out teeth for nothing. Ball me a ball. Ball me a ball. One teeth boy a ball. Two lick up it me. Shot in a head boy. Ball me a ball. Chatty chatty people. I who mind them business. Nobody come ball. Me face a ball. Rag no wipe. Ball me a ball. Cancer them use for fixer. Ball me a ball. Is a ball. For you guys to get more of the ball, maybe you got to go and cap that book. But listen, we'll be back with more after these messages right here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is Late Night with Cornell. I'm your host, Cornell Bunting. We'll be back after these messages. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. 
Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. And we're back with Late Night with Cornell right here on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Cornell Bunting. We've been talking about what ifs. I've been touching on some of my pieces. It's a beautiful thing. You know, I got to say, me and my fam, you know, because um, my upbringing is between Jamaica, the island, and um, England. And you know some parts of Europe, um, so we had a, we had a lot of what ifs, man. I mean, I do have a lot of what ifs. There's a lot of the what ifs that won't get touch on, but it kind of get your mind going a little bit, innit? Like you get your mind going on thinking, what if that had happened? What that would look like, you know? And then people be like, okay, you can't live in the past. The past has already happened. This is now. It's a beautiful thing. It's just for conversation, isn't it? Yeah. So, my last what if of the evening is, what if Charlie Magd had married Irene of Athens? And, you know, you don't get a name like the King of the Franks or... Charles the Great for nothing, and yet Emperor Charlie Magd could have ruled over an even greater portion of Europe had his marriage to Irene the Athenians had happened. You know, um, Charlie Magd uh, unite most of the Western Europe during the 8th century, as well as laying the foundation of modern-day France and Germany, having ascended to the Frankish throne in uh, 768 AD, before acquiring the Kingdom of Italy in 774 AD and then becoming the first Roman Empire in the Western Europe to be recognized by a Pope in more than three centuries. Yet in 802 AD, two years after Pope Leo III had acknowledged the legitimacy of Charlemagne claim over that of Irene, the Athenian as empire of uh, the Roman Empire, he very nearly became married to 
to his former rival. However, Irene the widow, empress of the uh, Byzantine uh, Empire, you know, was deposed and uh, exiled to the Creek Island of uh, Lesbo, you know, by Nicopros, you know, where she died in 1803 A.D. or 803 A.D., you know, before the marriage could occur. Wow, that's crazy right there. I mean, Irene that ensured that Charlemagne was unable to unify the Western Roman Empire with Eastern Roman empires before preventing him from creating an even larger Carolina empire. That was wild. That was, was wicked people. But just imagine if she didn't have died and that had happened. It would have been beautiful. But listen, to wrap up the show tonight, I got to tell you, I know you have your what ifs. Throw them out. Go at it with someone that, you know, your friends, whatever. It was fun chatting with you guys tonight. Listen, until we chat again next Monday, right here on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio with Late Night with Cornell. It was fun. This was beautiful. I had a blast. We will do this again. We are out. This has been Late Night with Cornell. Listen each week as Cornell will help you to understand how today's artists got where they are and how we can all learn from their experiences and discover the world of new entertainment. Right here on Late Night with Cornell. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.